And our guest, uh, in the last half hour of the show today, is gonna be delighted to talking to former replacement, solo artist, and current de facto member of Guns N' Roses, Mr. Tommy Stinson will be joining Yay. us in the last half hour of the show. We're not telling him about next week's guest, are we? No. Keep that under our hat. I don't think they're They talking. don't get on. No. <laughs> Ixnay on the Esterberg Way. Are we going to play some Paul Westwood when he's in? Let's. <laughs> Your so long is good, Tommy, but Paul's is much better. Oh, it's a belter. <laughs> Have you heard this one from Foker? <laughs> <laughs> and then he says a similar word back. Mm. From the album of Village Gorilla Head, Tommy Stinson there, not a moment too soon here on BBC Six Music and joining us now in the studio, still smelling faintly of Oslo. Is it Oslo? Oslo. Oslo. Tommy Stinson, hey, how are you, man? I'm good. Oslo smells like rain too because it's, really? it's raining everywhere. It's Europe and it's wet, but man, you're from Minnesota, you know about extreme weather, my friend. More on the snow side than, than the rain side. I mean, we get a little rain in the summer, but... Is it true that in Minnesota the shops are underground for the winter? They oh. bury. They've no. gone. <laughs> That's Toronto. <laughs> what? Toronto does that. Yeah, but Minnesota is just as cold. Oh, it's got lots of walkways and stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, Minnesota. We've got this thing called the sub, the the skyways. Mm. What they are is the walkways that connect that connect all the all the downtown shopping buildings above ground, like the second story. There's like these little glass things that are. And has Minneapolis got the Mall of America? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Which they say it nearly has its own weather system inside it. It's so big. It's pretty annoying, though. The one it's you really, left. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 Can't deal with malls all that much. So Too bright. Is, is Minnesota, Minneapolis still home to you, Tom, or where do you live now? Uh, you know, it is because I've got family there, but but LA is my home. I mean, I got my, my my friends there, my staple of you know gooders and not so gooders. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 uh, your social your social circle, yeah, if you will. Um, the album, Village Gorilla Head, um, I mean, I was just reading here in the biog, I'm not gonna lie to you, five years of, of, of assemblage, putting it together. Not really, not really so much that. I think, I think the, uh, bio's a little bit misleading on that. Um... Do you mean it's lies? <laughs> it's, well, it's bio. always lies. Of course, yeah. <laughs> My life isn't that interesting. Um, but really, no, the, um, I've been compiling the songs over the last five years while, while I was making the, the Guns N' Roses record or whatever, and... And only compiling the songs because I wasn't really thinking about making a record until until last March. Last March, uh, Frank Black let me use his studio while he came over to Europe and toured for two oh, months. Oh wow! So that that was when I really decided I was going to make a record because he let me use all his gear and his studio. And um, yeah, I didn't I didn't really have a ch thought about it before then. So then I decided to re-record some of the, the the demos I'd had and. I recorded enough songs to make a record, and I decided I'd just feel it up. When, you know, opportunism comes along, as you say, access to Frank Black's studio as it presented itself, do you feel that when, an, uh, when a project emerges in a more organic way, it has a bit more weight to it? It's, it's, it feels more natural? I, 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 think, I think that has a lot to do with why I still can listen to it, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been able to listen to my records past, you know, past the the mastering part, you know, yeah. whether it was replacements or whatever, you know. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think that the, uh, I would have never been able to make the record without Frank's studio. I suppose it's an Charles interesting is. concept when the artist does cut themselves off from a project. You know, it's like part of the way. Yeah. I mean, you know, Van Gogh towards the end of his career never knew when to leave the paintings alone, did he? Yeah. <laughs> painting and painting and painting and painting. Just like Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Exactly. I mean, I'm going to go home and and make it again. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna just make the whole record again. Maybe add a couple things, <laughs> break out a new brush. No, this damn thing needed. That's it. still not quite right. How is it though? Sort of fronting a band as opposed to sort of being the bass player? Because obviously the placements, Guns and Roses. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's um. He did Bang and Pop as well, didn't he? Bash and Pop. Yeah, Bash, bash and Pop. And I had this other band called Perfect that their their Ryko disc is. We're gonna put that record out now because I think they've seized a moment. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know what for, but uh, <laughs> uh, because the record company, you know, coming. yeah, you know, I've I've done so many different things, whether it's fronting a band or playing bass in a band or playing guitar in a band. Mm -hmm. I I did some stuff. I've done sessions with people like P Diddy. He was Puff Daddy then. <laughs> what did you do, with Puff? Yeah, I did Puff Daddy video that song all about the Benjamins. Oh, oh we love that video. I wrote the, I wrote the chorus for that damn thing and got paid nothing. Ah, uh, Mr. Uh, Diddy, how unlike you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, really, um, 
I've done so many things. It's I, I like all the aspects, like the you know playing bass in one band or fronting my own band. They all complement each other. Cause it's it's all about keeping it interesting to me. I don't really I like wearing one hat for too long. It gets you know mm, it's like any stuff. like anything. You know, you as an artist or whatever, you want to, you need to be inspired by stuff, and you know whether it's getting run over by a bus or whatever, you know. I know. When, when, we, when we got you in, yeah, I'm not quite sure what that was going then. We we like yeah. the, we often saw the chance of, uh, of picking a track in the middle here. And uh, what I loved about what he did was he looked out the window and went, Right, it's raining. What can we listen to? <laughs> and he, he wanted a song that would dovetail with uh, the, the rain here in, uh, in London. And uh, thankfully, I do have the uh, bonus edition of London Calling, the special edition that, that emerged, which you still haven't picked up yet, Tommy. You were very excited when you grabbed this here. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I didn't want to buy it over here because it won't play on my the, DVD. It's a fortune as well. Yeah, 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 it won't play my DVD player in LA, so I have to wear like a pack. Oh. But the packaging is very nice. It's lovely, isn't it? Nice yeah. And uh, I can't wait. From, you wanted to hear the Vanilla Tapes version of uh, of a song that complements the rain, so this is uh, taken from the vil Vanilla Tapes disc of the special edition of London Calling in the shops now. This is the original demo version of London Calling. Not, uh. only, not only discovered in Mick Jones' garage, but it sounds like it was recorded there as well. Absolutely, yeah. London Calling from the Vanilla Tapes, uh, the bonus disc you get with the current <coughs> version of the album and the, the demo version of London Calling. And as uh, Tommy Stinson so rightly observed, um, top of head on completely had his uh, drum part down mm. from the word <laughs> go. Yeah. He yeah, knew where he was boys, going. Yeah, the boys less sure of what, less sure of what was going on anyway. Mm. Didn't it sound like Joe really was into the song. It sounded like he was kind of going, why are we still doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that myself towards the end. You know, it's <laughs> possibly good that they persevered with that and made it a bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> right, here's BBC Six Music. We're talking with Tommy Stinson, um, solo artiste in his own right, but also a kind of, um, how, you're in Guns N' Roses as well, Tom. <clears throat> but it's yeah. kind of a, a, a floating project, isn't it? It's a bit amorphous. Is that uh, right? Yeah, that, that that would that'd be good. That'd be a good way to describe it. Amorphous, um, amorphous thing. <laughs> yeah, it's morphing as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> When's the album? Do you know? Um, I, I do you care? I, I Are you past do, the point? <laughs> no, I do care because um, I, I guess you actually heard some of the the final mixes. You know, at the of it before I left from the states like six weeks ago, and um. I had to listen to him because I want to get my two cents in on what I thought about him before it was done. It might be, it could be done for all I know right now. I just haven't been in contact really. But um, what I heard was epic, so I was pretty pretty stoked about it. Wow. And uh, the record is going to come out, and I'm going to be in the band touring behind it, and um, we'll come and play Docklands Arena again and have a oh, have another night. Where, where did you play last time? You played the Leeds Festival, didn't you? Oh, uh, we Leeds? played Leeds. Yeah. We played Puckle Pop. We played. Um, we played Docklands. Yeah, that was Docklands was fantastic. It was so much fun. <coughs> and, didn't uh, they go on at something like ten to eleven? They usually do though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Axel's on Pacific time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Actually, that, 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 would, that would make him more on. You know, like. Uh, like Jap Japan time more than more <laughs> I think than, he is. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, <clears throat> yeah, I think we went on kind of late, but um. I, I don't think anyone was worried about that. I don't think they were. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you've been waiting five years. <laughs> yes, you know, exactly. What's what, 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 two hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bar's still open. <laughs> yeah. Here's <laughs> long that been. No, but it's a good gig. I like it a lot. You know, he's. How long he, have you been in them? About seven years? Six years now. Yeah. He's been oh. really, he's been really good to me. Like I said before, I wouldn't have been able to make the record without Charles, and I certainly wouldn't have been able to make this record without Axel's support. He's been nothing but, but awesome to me. And knowing I'm going out and yeah. doing my own thing for a minute while he's finishing up, it's that's, been great. That's actually must be great. Yeah. Does he does he give you enough time? I mean, are you able to afford plan your career or? or he, are, not are really, the of... I, because it all came up very. Like I said, I didn't really plan anything. When it came up last March for me to make a record, I told him what I wanted to do, and he was like very cool about it. I told him I want to go on the road and toured sport it he's like cool go out and then find us some cool places to play wow you know it was very cool and he's been like that so really i'm just wait i'm just getting as much in until i get the call for okay we need to rehearse now is it a bit like is there a, like a red phone under a glass jar in the tour bus because he's trying phone. to pick like a yeah. logo oh, in the sky yeah. no I, I got this chip in my head that goes off <laughs> <laughs> you remember the band now yeah no it's a little little Chip. Yeah. But, uh, I, I see At least now. it's not on my shoulder, though. I can see you now. Halfway it's through. in my head, not on my shoulder. Halfway through your uncle, and then yeah. the, the beeper goes off. <coughs> I'm, so, I'm yep. sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do have to nip off now. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop doing the bass solo. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have to crack on. Do apologise. Next is a drum solo. <laughs> so, um,. Uh, looking back over, you know, it's an incredible career, Tommy. You've been involved with, with the replacements. Since you've got 12. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, you've been just going... You know, is there any single part of it that, that, that fills you with more pride than any other, or is it? Or do you like the fact that it's been a broad and varied career? Uh, you know, I like that it's been broad and varied and has its ups and many downs as well, but mm. I, th I think I'm most proud of my new record. I'm probably 
more, more part of the Guns N' Roses record. I think that the, the way that came together, and I know you guys haven't heard it yet, and people over here are real skeptical about it. For me... It's, it's, it's in our nature, Tommy. It's in our nature. It's, yeah, it's, no, that's cool. To, to us, the, that Guns N' Roses album, it's like the unicorn. Yeah. We yeah. love the thought of it, but we're not sure it really exists. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so what I was going to say is that yeah, making that record, and you'll, you'll hear it soon enough, the process that we that we used to make it, which is you know eight guys collaborating on these songs together, it wasn't like Axel came in and said, hey, "A year yeah, we're, we're doing, yeah, we're going to come in and do this song." It was really a great process, and yeah. really, you know, I learned a lot from it that I hadn't learned prior to that. Because you know, Paul Westerberg was kind of a dictator. He kind of came in and said, "This is oh, how it please. goes." You play. Paul's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lovely guy. <laughs> Once in a while, but what uh, did I tell you, you know, about throwing the match in the bucket of petrol? He yeah. mentioned Paul first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, were well, you going to go there? Were you going to go there? No, no. I just I interviewed Paul about three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, and I was asking about you, and he just he, said, well, "Did he come here?" No, he's he's, he's actually here next week playing. Oh. He's playing the Scala next week. Tell him Tommy said, "Don't suck." <laughs> <laughs> he's our guest on Tuesday. We'll mention that. <laughs> but he was nice about you. Yeah, oh, no, I'm, and I, you know, I love him. He's like a brother to me. And That's I, exactly just, what we've he said. Had, we've, yeah. you know, he's we've had our time, you know, and I, I just. Uh, I want him. I want him to not suck. There you go. We'll pass that on Tom. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. I want him. I want him. I want him to like you know enjoy playing. Get out there and play in front of people and have a good time. It's you know it's it's, it's all that's all we got left is exactly. to get out and play music and it's have a good a, time. It's with all it, got a bit Mike Lee. He has a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tommy Smith, it's been a ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he's, he's on his way to Greece tonight. Yes, you know, he's he in Norway last night. Uh, Greece, uh, Greece tomorrow. Tommy, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, enjoy the touring and everything, and come back. Soon. Come I back will. Back the band, yeah? Hopefully, I'm gonna come back in February with the band. Yeah. Cool, excellent. Uh, taken from Tommy's one of them album <laughs> Village Gorilla Head, uh, which is in your shops now, youngsters. Uh, this is the opener called Without a View. Tom, thanks very thanks, much Tom. indeed. Cheers. Thank you very much.